I imagine there's a couple of you out there that love the Game Boy. Well, me too. The Game Boy was one of the best portable systems ever made by Nintendo, and I'll tell you something, I miss it. And when I saw this product on store shelves, I knew I had to get it, because this is a basically weird device that lets you play Game Boy games on your cell phone. Does it work? Well, let's find out. This is the Smart Boy by Hyperkin. Now, by looking at this, you probably don't exactly know what it might be, but honestly, all you're really looking at is a controller that hooks up to the bottom of your cell phone. But it also has one additional feature. In the back, it's got a Game Boy and Game Boy Color slot so that you can actually put in original cartridges and play them just like you're playing them on a Game Boy. Now, initially, when I heard about this thing, I had one major concern. First off, it was an April Fool's joke originally that Hyperkin made, and I don't think anyone thought they were actually going to produce it. But then they somehow took the joke and made it real. There were a lot of issues with something like this coming into reality, and one being you really don't know what kind of cell phones it's gonna work on. Now they've said that this works on most Samsung phones that have a USB-C port at the bottom, but we also found that this worked really well with my phone, which is the Essential phone, which does have a USB-C port and it wasn't initially designed for this product. Likely if you have a cell phone with a USB-C port at the bottom and it's thin enough, it could go in here and it likely would work. But getting something like this is always gonna be a risk because you never quite know what phones will work in it and which ones will not. As long as you apparently have a Samsung phone though, you should be fine, at least one of the models that were released around the time that this thing was actually produced. Now let's go over some of the physical elements of this thing. Right off the top, you've got a D-pad that has a nice central pivot, something that I think Hyperkin actually put a lot of effort into. You also have a B and an A button and a select and a start button, and on the back you have an L and R trigger. Now the problem that I had with these two triggers is that, well, Game Boy games typically didn't use something like this until the Game Boy Advance. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later, but keep those things in mind for now. And you'll also find on the bottom a little button that kind of pushes in the USB-C slot just a little bit back or a little bit forward, depending on what kind of phone you're using. And on the back, you'll find a black button that expands the left and right sides of the Smart Boy to accommodate larger and smaller phones. And then once you push down, it clamps on it and locks it into place. The entire method of which you stick your phone in this thing seemed to be okay, but not really the best. It's a little bit loose sometimes, and I don't really feel like it's got the best hold of the phone. And in some instances, it kind of pulled me away from the gameplay experience I was having whenever I was trying any game with this thing. Once your cell phone is inside the Smart Boy, you're gonna run into one big problem. Half your screen on your cell phone has disappeared, and you won't be able to access it, even if something pops up like a warning or something like that, which did happen with me, and it was really frustrating. Because in certain instances, a warning will pop up in regards to one of the video games you're playing, and you'll have to take your entire cell phone out of the Superboy just to select it, only to put it back in. And in some instances, once you've taken your cell phone out of the Smart Boy, the warning disappears, only to reappear once you put it down inside the system again. These issues may have been remedied if Hyperkin just used their own emulation software that they made, but unfortunately, they didn't do that. What they did was they used some third-party software called My Old Boy, which in and of itself is a pretty good piece of software, but it really does doesn't feel like it was made for this device because, well, it wasn't. There are two versions of it. One you can download for free that is sponsored by advertisements, and the other one is paid, but it has a bunch of extra features. So of course, I had to go for the paid option because I wanted to see exactly what you'd be getting out of this device when using a premium piece of software. My Old Boy is pretty good emulation software for your cell phone, and you can use it without the Smart Boy attached, and honestly, I probably recommend that, because the software was clearly not made with this game hardware in mind. For one, when you lose half of the screen real state, you can't access all the options that my old boy has. For instance, being able to switch games from ROM files and stuff like that. It really is maddening because a lot of the really cool features that this software has are hidden behind the bottom part of the screen, which is just so irritating. And I guess if you really wanted to, you could rotate the phone and somehow try and get at the menu that way, but you're not going to see all the options and it just doesn't really work all that well. But that shouldn't affect just playing cartridge-based games, right? Because all you're doing is just taking a cartridge, putting it in and playing it, who cares what the settings are? Well, folks, it actually doesn't work that well. Once you put the cartridge into the back of the Smart Boy, what you're actually doing isn't running anything from the cartridge itself. You're just taking all the information from there and turning it into a ROM file that gets stored into the internal memory of your cell phone. And once that's there, you just use the emulation software to load that ROM file. You're not actually touching the cartridge after this. But let's just say you do happen to access 
accidentally touch the cartridge or just, I don't know, shake it around a little bit because this is a portable system and sometimes they get a little bit loose. If that happens, you get a big red screen on your cell phone preventing you from doing anything as long as it's plugged into the smart boy. That's right, kids. You got to take the entire phone out of the smart boy. And you want to know why they did this? Because they assume that this was the best method to avoid people actually pirating the games. You see, if you put the cartridge in and the ROM file gets taken out of the game and stored into the internal memory of your phone, well, you could just take that ROM file and then keep it and you would never have to use the cartridge again. So for some bizarre reason, they assume this was the best way to avoid any legal issues. But folks, I don't think Nintendo cares about the original Game Boy all that much. I don't even think anyone cares about stealing the ROM files because you can find them practically everywhere online. They're super small. And you know what? All the ROM files that you would have pre-installed with that emulator they make you use would still be there. And you can use those ROMs when you go to play this as long as you start the ROM up before you put it into the smart boy. So what was the purpose of any of this other than to irritate users when they tried to switch out a game? Because if you do try to switch out a game, even legally, just to play another cartridge, you're gonna run into the exact same problem and it's gonna lock you out from playing anything. If you've been looking at the Smart Boy because you assumed it was gonna be an easier way to play Game Boy games on the go, well, it's not. It really isn't. In fact, it's far more difficult than playing games on an original Game Boy. And what makes it even worse is I couldn't even recommend this thing as a controller for other games on your cell phone because, well, half the screen's cut off and it doesn't connect through Bluetooth, so it's basically useless for anything but this one function. But of course, it does have left and right triggers on the back, which means that maybe, just maybe, you could use this to play Game Boy Advance games. Sure, you can't actually use the cartridges, but what you can do is use another emulator. Since my old boy runs Game Boy games and Game Boy Color games, the same people that made that emulator made another one called My Boy, which just plays Game Boy Advance games. Both of these emulators are very well designed with a ton of great features, but when you use the Smart Boy, it's almost lost on them. See, look, you got these two triggers on the back, so you just have to assume it can run Game Boy Advance games because why else would they be there? Well, for some reason, I couldn't get these triggers to work with any of the emulators I tried. I have no way of actually changing the settings for anything because I can't access the base menu options because half the screen is hidden under this stupid controller. I've got no idea why they did this. If you were going to have those triggers at the back, you must have had some reasoning for it. Maybe sometime down the line of the development of this thing, they just got lazy and decided that, oh, I guess Game Boy Advance games just aren't going to work anymore and just left them in. I'm totally perplexed by this. Guys, what was the point of doing this if you had no intention of using them? I also tried some other emulators that have games that could work with this control scheme like an NES, but honestly, they just don't work. There's no way for me to change the options for the control settings, which was just so irritating. I've got no idea why this hardware is so incompatible with so much software, but it just doesn't give you the options. And maybe there is an option, maybe there is, but I can't access what's in the back of the screen, and when you take out the cell phone, suddenly it doesn't recognize it, so you're not capable of connecting everything. That's what makes a Bluetooth controller so worthwhile. In fact, all the controllers we've ever shown off from 8-Bit Do do not have this problem because they connect effortlessly with your cell phone, and then you can just access anything you want because the controller isn't blocking half the screen. Now, before anybody rushes to the comments and says that we weren't using the right phone for this review, well, we did. Now, on the box, it says that this smart boy was designed for Samsung phones in mind, so we went out and got a Galaxy S8. And you know what's funny about the Galaxy S8? It's actually pretty thin, a lot thinner than the Essential phone anyway, and it seemed to fit even worse inside the Smart Boy. Plus, all the software and interface issues we had while using the Smart Boy with the Essential phone, well, they were replicated with the Samsung. It was really annoying too, because we just hoped that it would have worked a little bit better. But unfortunately, no matter where you go with this, no matter what kind of phone you try, you're probably gonna get the exact same experience we did. The Smart Boy was once just just an April Fool's prank, but honestly folks, I think it should have stayed that way.
So I think the smart boy is a pretty mixed bag. You got a whole bunch of cool things on here that seem neat at the front, but when you go to try to use the features, you got a lot of problems. If it was just a little bit more well designed and maybe had its own built in emulation software, it would be a far better product. But as it stands now, I think it's something that may be cool for collectors, but for just general gamers out there that are looking to use a real controller on their actual cell phone, you're probably better off getting a Bluetooth controller because this, I don't think lives up to the hype.